Hey, you guys, welcome back to the channel. We got another recap. This one is Ready to Love, Season 5, Episode 8, X Marks the Spot. So we got some X's in the house. But before we unpack this, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. If you like the video, smash that like button and also feel free to drop a comment down in the comment section below. So we're not going to waste any time with this. Let's jump into this. So, as the ladies meet the men's exes, it definitely becomes clear which ladies may make it until the end as few get to meet the exes one-on-one, -on -one, but rather in a group. So, unfortunately, only the men were aware that the ladies were going to meet an ex. And to make the situation all the more difficult, like when the fellas met the friends, the ladies had to deal with not being the only one invited. Now, let's be clear, though, it didn't mean things went well for those who did get a solo like Camille, as shown and even noted by nephew Tommy. There are red flags there, and it seems even Cordelius might finally realize that he maybe put a little bit too much time into the wrong one. Well, let's talk about Tizia because she was put into a four-way date between her and Phil, Shiloh, and Phil's ex. And that didn't go too well. I should have been to his left and I should have been to his right. It definitely wasn't indicative of how the relationship generally is. So she definitely shut down uh, a bit. And she wasn't feeling this whole situation at all. She kind of felt like not the third wheel, but she felt like the fourth wheel in this whole situation. Because it was like Shiloh took over. I was over. like, wow, is this what y'all really doing? Trying to cut me off and over talk me. I definitely felt some type of way. Now, I mean, for a while, you know, she didn't mind competing through one-on-one -on -one dates. But the whole group thing just wasn't part of what she wanted to do. And with uh, feeling like Phil's ex and Shiloh were a bit much, it seemed definitely like a waste of time for her. So she was so far over this whole situation. And you can tell it, you know, spoke volumes in the energy that she had. But like calculated strategic person. Got you. Now, she wasn't the only one that was uncomfortable. However, Sabrina did partly experience the same setup that she gave Walter and Sean. But with Walter's ex thinking Sabrina was hiding this crazy side, this definitely planted a seed in Walter's head. But for the most part, these exes may not make outright convincing statements, but they're definitely planting some seeds. Now, another example is with both Dante and Naeem. Now, there is the question of whether she was the right one. Now, for Dante's ex, the issue is Zadia asking questions that ask for a critical opinion of Dante. And for Naeem, his ex's issue was whether she could be there for him emotionally. So, you know, it definitely raised some questions in both guys' heads when it came to Zadia. But um, when it comes to planting seeds, I mean, they wasn't direct about it, but it definitely put some things on these guys' minds. Now, when it came to Mumin and Shiloh, now, they seem to be the ones multiple men want. Now, both are doing well when uh, in the presence of the other women that their man is interested in. And they even find ways to impress, impress the ex and the guy that they like. So with Mumin, uh, Walter's ex and Frank's ex loves her. Now, Walter's ex even puts her over Sabrina, which is... Yeah, I, I think she's pretty much in the catbird seat right now, meaning Mew Me. And then with Shiloh, Phil's ex loves her and Danta's also because as shown, she knows how to communicate, she knows how to adapt, and generally stays out of and away from the drama. She's just enjoying this whole process. And the same goes for Sydney. Now on her double date with Frank and Mew Me, while she does kind of get the side eye for having a long list of questions for Frank's ex, she and Mumin get along absolutely marvelously. Then to follow that up, 
with that good date, she also asked out Phil, and of course, that gave him so many butterflies. So it looks like, needless to say, Sydney, Shiloh, and Mu Mean seem to be the ones that's going to be going home with somebody. So the bottom two this week is Tizia and Sabrina. Now, Phil rightfully speaking to Tizia and Frank for some reason speaking to Sabrina. Now, correct us if we're wrong, but shouldn't the person they had or have the strongest match have this elimination conversation? I mean, why is Frank there to potentially eliminate Sabrina? Now, I know some of us is wondering why Sabrina is even on the chopping block. Well, according to the guys, it's the lack of interest. Now, note from what it seems, she doesn't have a problem with making the first move. The issue is getting some reciprocity to that. Now, she even has to call out Frank for she'll hit him up, but it take him days for him to respond. Yet, despite the guys seemingly lacking a connection with her, you know, but she still ended up being safe. Um, Tizzy, on the other hand, um, she's been in the bottom too many times and she ended up being eliminated, but she seemed pretty chill about it. Um, there isn't the notable, you know, anger we saw in the past because it seems like she was getting tired of this process anyway. So, this elimination for her is definitely no sweat off of her back. And I just want to throw this in here. Did you guys see the artwork that Cornelius had of himself? Drop down in the comments and sound off and let me know what you thought about this. I thought that was pretty creative, but I want to know what you guys think about his uh, self-portrait and the way that the artwork was done. I thought it was pretty interesting. So... The problem Sabrina talked about having to pursue the guys and not getting a consistent response, the reason why we didn't see Aisha this episode, there was a lot of questions about that. Now, I mean, does she have the same problem? Now, I know Femin has to work around their families and work schedules, but with Sabrina, with what she said, you know, it kind of got some of us thinking. Now, there's seven women left to six men, so will the men end up being, you know, doing a double elimination after this trip? And then I'm wondering about Cornelius. Is he's going to get eliminated? Now, he is still hyper-focused on Camille and hasn't built up a connection with anyone else. Add in the only one who might go for celibacy, which is Mu Mean, and it makes it so he's possibly the weakest link in this now as for who might be in the position to be number two is naeem he only invited zadia to meet his ex and while phil has far pulled ahead naeem remains uh to be one of the least talked about men in this whole group even dante's look like he's doing better and he has three different kids with three different women, and that has yet to be noted as a notable mark in his candidacy. Now, as for the next woman to be eliminated, could it possibly be between Camille and Sabrina? Now, both appear to have limited connections, but Camille likely will get eliminated, you know, possibly on her attitude, you know. So, I mean, at this point, you know, Ready to Love is not that new show anymore. Um, I think people, I mean, with the people that we have left, they understand the point of the process. And while some of the women are getting kind of anxious, they still get it. And I mean, the thought can be, you know, the same for the guys as well. They know, uh, of course, Mumin, Shiloh, and even Sydney are at people's tops. And there is a certain level of respect that is, you know, we've seen in the past, if you press someone to choose there's a good chance they won't choose you back and if not as shown multiple times before you know you could get embarrassed by the time the reunion hits you know so now i know that people can be friends with their ex and even we had the whole meet the friends uh episode last week 
Now, let me ask you guys, do you think that there is any value in meeting somebody's ex? I mean, you can kind of see Shiloh presenting why this isn't a terrible idea for the way someone talks about their ex and whether their ex would date them again. Kind of could say something. However, are any of these exes regular parts of these cast member lives anymore? And I mean, it would make sense to have both sides meet friends than to have an ex who could stir up insecurity beyond what's already there. Now, unlike, you know, previous seasons, people aren't bringing a notable amount of baggage. But let's not pretend that it isn't bad enough you know about mm, three or so people competing with you. But to even add an X in that too, it kind of seems like a lot. Plus with this whole let's have two people get interviewed at the same time thing. I mean, I get it saves time, but it makes an already awkward situation even worse and more nerve wracking. But you know, the point is these guys need to be sure of their choices and only an outside person maybe can help with that. You know, I just kind of wish they would, you know, really throw in a hook and bring a couple's counselor or a therapist to test these relationships. Now that definitely would be a twist. So let me know what you guys think about that, what, about the video, about the video and, um, you know, your thoughts sound off in the comments because I want to hear your thoughts about this particular episode and this whole X thing being able to kind of guide on whether you should move on with your next. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.